contacted her that I showed up out of nowhere and that I just abandoned Atlas that she hadn't heard anything for more than two months no not even close okay so the first message I sent uh, I actually got that wrong I was in the wrong order on the last one okay so the first message that I actually sent her was on January 30th at 4.10. I said, hi there, my name is Amy, Atlas's owner. I'm back in Alaska and was wondering if I can pick him up tonight. That message did not go through. Um, I do know that she has an iPhone and it delivered green. So I'm like, okay, either my phone's not working. Like I didn't know if maybe my service was bad or if my number was blocked. Um, so then I messaged on my fiance's phone who had better service than me. And I wrote again, and this was at 4.14 p.m., so just, you know, a few minutes later. I said, hi, this is Atlas's mama. Can I pick him up tonight? My ex gave me your number. That message was delivered. Showed delivered. iPhone showed blue and showed delivered down below. Then I wrote again after not hearing back. I said, my service is crazy. Please reply if you got my message. Not delivered. And then I said, is this blah, blah, blah which I didn't even have her name correct because my ex didn't even have her name, name correct. That's how little he knew of her. <laughs> Ridiculous. So I contact my ex again. I say, hey, my number's been blocked. Eric's number's been blocked. I cannot get a hold of her. Where do I go get my dog? You need to go get him for me. You need to handle this. You need to fix this. You need to resolve this. I need my boy. I'm panicked. Um, I revert back to my you know the voice that i heard when we were in florida before we left that said you need to get out there or you're gonna lose your boy forever i was like oh no it's happening like what is going on so he tells me i can't get a hold of her i'm blocked he tried messaging her and um the last time he had messaged her was on january 19th and said x is moving back she said nice he said, not excited about her moving back. She said, I thought you'd stop talking to her. You don't owe her anything, dot, 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 block. He said, I have some of her stuff. She is going to get Atlas, unfortunately. She said, I'm sorry you are dealing with her. He said, it's okay. She doesn't need my contact info ever, she said. 19th, she does not need my contact info ever. Why? Why would I not need her contact info ever? Okay. So, um... He said, I know, I won't let that happen. She sent a thumbs up. He said, sorry. She said, get this, she's allegedly babysitting, or she's allegedly pet sitting, right? With, with no ill intentions on her part at all, what she's doing is such a noble thing. She said, FYI, I've done a lot of research, dot, dot, dot. After six months, property is considered abandoned and no longer hers to claim. I know you have some of her stuff, depending on how much stuff she could arrange a storage unit. Have you shipped to her or donate? Then you don't have to deal with her. He said, I don't even want to get into that argument. She said, I understand that too. He said, I guess I should have just kept him then because she is going to come after me and it's going to cost me thousands. She said, it won't cost you thousands. Don't be like that. You don't owe her anything. He said, I, it really will because I was going to claim her and the kids on my taxes so I didn't get screwed at the end of this year. If she doesn't get her dog, I guarantee I will not be able to claim her kids. So that tells me right there, he definitely was not trying to give Atlas to her because he knows how much I love him. And he knows what would happen, what the result would be. She said, just stop talking about it. I'd be surprised if she even moved back. He said, she has booked the flights for the 29th. They are moving to Wasilla. She said, I'm going to a meeting, can't talk for a while. And then January 30th. At 5.40 p.m., he wrote her again. Amy is ready to get Atlas. She is in town. Not delivered. He was blocked. I did not have this group of messages before I was contacting her. I didn't get these until after the case had started. But I just wanted to kind of give you that little bit of insight before going into where we were. Okay, so now going back to where we currently are. So currently, I'm trying to get a hold of her. I can't, I've been blocked. Um, and so after my fiance's phone has been blocked as well, I called the police and I was like, hey, I am in town to pick up my dog from someone that was watching him. I'm blocked, my fiance's blocked, and the 
my and my ex's block, the one that you know put her in charge of watching him. So they said, well, what we can do is call the police civil standby. So go to her residence, go park about you know two houses down from her home, and then give us a call when you've arrived. So after calling the police. Eric called and left her a message, even though his number was blocked. Because in case you didn't know, you can actually still leave a voicemail to a, a number that has blocked you. It'll still go through. It'll just show up as a voicemail from a blocked caller. So when he calls and he just, he left a message and said, Hi, this is Eric Nation, Amy's fiance. We're here to pick Atlas up. We're in town. And, um, if we don't hear from you, we will be heading down that way to do a police civil standby. So we will be coming to your residence. And that was that. It was a very polite, very calm, no anxiety, no anger, no blame, nothing. Just, hey, you know, if we don't hear from you, this is what we're gonna do. So I'm continuing to talk to my ex and I'm, you know, trying to get her actual right name. I finally get her address and we head down that way to where she lives which was an, about an hour roughly from where we were. We get down there and we head to the residence and because I'm still unsure and my ex wasn't entirely sure where she lived, worst mistake of my life putting him in charge of watching my fur baby. I just saw it. I mean he was in the family for so long. He was in the family since Atlas was a puppy so I thought you know you would handle him with care but that clearly was not the case here. So we get down there and we start driving past what I think is the residence and we drive past slowly and I'm looking and I take a picture and I send it to my ex. I'm like is this her home? And before we even can park, before we even get to two houses down, it was like they were watching for us. Uh, SUV pees out of the driveway, speeds down the road, and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, was that her? Like, I don't, like I said, I didn't, she was a stranger to me. I didn't know what she looked like. I didn't know what kind of car she drove other than that it was an SUV. But I also knew that she had teenage children that drove and family, so I mean, it could have been anybody. So that peels out and I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, let's see who that is. Like, follow the, follow the vehicle. So we follow the vehicle to try to see if we could tell who it was, if it was her, if it was a kid, if it was a man, you know, whatever was driving the vehicle, I had no idea. We tried catching up, man, oh man, she was going way too fast. I could not see the driver. We couldn't even get close enough because she was speeding through every light. Like this driver was going very fast. So I don't know if they saw me, but it definitely appeared like they saw, like they were watching because of the voicemail that we left and the messages from my ex of saying, Hey, you know, this is, she's ready. Um, it was like, it seemed as though they were ready and waiting and took off the second we got there we realize we can't catch up and I have no clue who it was or what it was driving that SUV called the police and they were like don't follow the vehicle you know turn around and I was like okay okay we turned around and we parked two houses down and I called the police I said okay we're here we're at the residence we are ready and anxiously waiting um, they informed me, you know, we're going to send a couple officers out, blah, blah, blah. After I got off the phone with them, I messaged my ex who was at work at the time, did not live very far from this residence. I said, hey, we're here. I need you here to verify to the police and to this woman that Atlas is mine, that you did not give him to her because that was my biggest fear is that she was trying to claim ownership. He are waiting and the police arrive and I'm sitting in the car like excited for the police to get there because in my mind the police are gonna show up and they're gonna go knock on the door and they're gonna say I'm here to retrieve this woman's dog and they're gonna walk out with Atlas and we're gonna go home and everything's gonna be perfect um, that's not how things happen though so I watched the police walk up to the residence and seems like they're up there for a little bit and then they walk back and I'm like, I don't see Atlas. They don't have Atlas with them. They walk back out to their vehicle and around that same time, my ex arrives. So they're out there talking and I'm like, okay, no one's motioning for me to come over. No one's got Atlas. And I walk out to go see what's going on. I, the police officer meets me and he's telling me, 
that she said that Atlas was given to her. And that he has already been microchipped and registered in her name. And I'm, I'm in disbelief and I'm just, it was like a tunnel went around me and, and like all the sounds around me just sounded like they were so distant and I felt like I was in a nightmare. I felt like it was my worst nightmare coming true regarding my dog, of course, you know, I have other worst nightmares with my kids and everything else, but you know, it's anxiety of a mother. I lost my mind. I, I cried the most heart-wrenching cry that you could ever hear. It dropped me to my knees and I just remember screaming. I, I just screamed. I was like, no, like why? And I'm screaming at my ex. I was like, I effing hate you. Like, how could you do this to me? You know how much Atlas means to me. How on earth could you betray me in such a way? He was like, I swear I did not give him to her. I did not. It was, it was awful because I look out to the window and I can see Atlas jumping from window to window like, Mom, you're here to come get me. I can only imagine what was going through his mind. And I'm crying, I'm screaming, and I just keep asking the cops over and over again. I was like, why? Why can't you go get him? Like, why Why can't you get him? And uh, my ex shows proof, you know, text messages that he has on his phone where they had a written agreement, not a formal written agreement, but where he said multiple times, this is Amy's dog, he's not your dog, you know, he's, she's still coming to get him. And where she says, yes, I know, I am, I am aware. And as I said in the previous part, um, the message that she had sent, one of the messages that he sent the police, or that he showed the police officers at night six, and he said, so my ex is nervous about you not, maybe not knowing that Atlas could be leaving. First of all, I hate that he said could because there is no could, might, maybe, nothing. Atlas is my furry child. I never, ever, ever had any thought, any notion, any idea, any possibility, plausibility, anything, any word you want to throw in there that has the same meaning, none of it. Never was I ever going to sell Atlas, get rid of Atlas, abandon Atlas, or anything. He is my fur child. Um, he's a family member. He means a lot to me. He means a lot to my children. He means a lot to my family as a whole for many reasons. Um, the world loves Atlas. So a gap in here where she said something and then he said, thank you, she is having anxiety. But that I found out at trial and I will reveal that at the end of the story time. Oh my gosh, you guys, you would not believe the kind of people that are out there in this world. But anyway... So she said, I, I know you already know this already, but we love Atlas. I told the kids the other day that your ex might come and get him, and they cried, begged to buy him, and cuddled him all night long. He was super sweet as usual. The first sight of tears, he went straight to her daughter to comfort her. It will be hard on the kids if he goes. If? No. No ifs, ands, or buts. But want you to know it has been a huge blessing to us to have him, even if it may be temporary. He has helped her son through being through some personal issues. I'm not going to get into that, but she just goes on to say how if he leaves, if he goes, they will be sad. And that at the end, she says, um, we love him. Thank you for trusting us to take care of him. So I don't know what he said because it's cut off. Um, I'm assuming that he said, you know, to say something different. She said, I'm sorry. Do I need to say something different? I feel like she's my friend's ex, not going to be happy no matter what is said. He said, she hates you said might and could. She said, do you need me to say something different? So you know, we know we are watching Atlas for you and this arrangement wouldn't be permanent as your ex planned on picking him up. I would hope that she would be glad that we loved him like he's our own, but that's me. Is she using Atlas as a way to keep communication with you? So that is the messages that he showed the police officers that night, and that wasn't enough. Even though her own words stated, I know that he is not mine. I know this wouldn't be permanent. I know this is temporary. That wasn't enough. So, um, like I said, I was in complete and utter disbelief that night. I, I was 
I was loud. I did get loud. You better believe I got loud. What mother or father wouldn't get loud if they're fur baby or if they're skin baby, children, kids, whatever, was being withheld from you when you knew damn well that you did not give your baby away? What, what person in their right mind wouldn't get angry? I mean, we've all seen John Wick, right? You know, I mean, I'm just saying, that's my child. You don't mess with my children, fur children or skin children. So I got angry, I got frustrated. I got angry with the situation and frustrated with the entire situation as a whole. And I felt completely dumbfounded. I felt confused as to why I kept asking the police officers, which I know I've said already, but I, I kept asking them over and over and over again, why? Why can't you do something? It's in writing right here where her own, on her own admission, her own accord says, yes, I know it is temporary. And um, I was upset. And the next thing I know, um, her brother and someone, her brother and I think it was her son, they arrived. I'm. I didn't find that out and who they were until afterwards, but so they arrived and I'm like, talk to me, like someone freaking talk to me. And they went straight inside, didn't say anything. And then her dad pulled up um, shortly after and I was like, excuse me, um, are you like, do you live here? And he goes, no. I said, well, are you related to the family? Or are you with the church? Or are you like a family member? And he goes, I'm not answering that. And, and I said, well, will, will you please talk to me? Will somebody please talk to me about what's going on? And he just shook his head and, and continued on into the house. It was so frustrating because I felt so helpless. You know what I mean? Because like I couldn't, no one would talk to me. I stood there a little bit longer um, after the police. I, I wasn't make, I wasn't yelling. There, I was just standing outside. Like I saw someone look out the window and I was like, come talk to me. Like, will somebody please talk to me? Like help me understand what is going on. So, do you remember that SUV that I said left and peeled out and was speeding? Yeah, well, as I was about to leave, that SUV pulled back up, and lo and behold, it was the woman that has my dog. She went straight in the house, there was no interaction, she would not talk to me. Um, I was just left there dumbfounded still, left shortly after, and just, I sobbed and screamed the entire way back to the hotel. I was just like, how? I felt complete and utter disgust. I felt disappointed, sad, angry, frustrated. And uh, we went back to the hotel that night and I immediately got to work on trying to come up with a solution to get Atlas back because nothing would stop me from getting my baby back, nothing.